Hey guys, just got back from Akihabara, bought me some cardboard boxes, cost me 11,180 yen, that's about 100 bucks US at the current exchange rate, knocked the two zeros off the end and that's basically dollars. Two boxes for 100 bucks, and you know what the best thing is? The contents came free, isn't that an awesome deal? Couldn't pass it up. Sanwa EM7000 FET Multitester, made in Japan, Nihon Seizor. That's what it says in Japanese there. It's a analog multimeter. Awesome. I got this for doing uh, audio gear and um, other analog sort of stuff where I want to see a, a change in, uh, in the signal rather than a, a definite exact uh, voltage or current or whatever. These are good for about 3%-ish. Uh, full scale at full scale deflection. That's the accuracy you get on these. Um, so they're not going to give you a super precise reading. You can get pretty good. You can get ballpark enough for normal sort of bench soft, bench top sort of stuff. But yeah, they're really good for seeing a change. So if you've got a, a signal that's going up and down and up and down, a lot easier to see on one of these than it w is to um, to see on a, uh, a digital multimeter. That's why tacos and uh, speedos in your car they're all still analog because you can see that nice smooth change. So you got the multimeter, comes with leads, silicon, uh, safety caps on the end so you can have the fully exposed piece or you can have it covered up so you don't accidentally short something in a uh, mains voltage or whatever and cause an arc fault. Nice touch there, good quality. They're pretty soft, not as soft as the uh, the flukes. The fluke um, leads, I mean they cost what, $40 a set but they're really, really nice and supple. These are still really good. Better than the uni tees um, that I've got sitting up here. Let's feel them. Yeah, the Unities are a little bit firmer. These are a little bit softer. So these are above average. They're a good lead. Unities, there's not, nothing wrong with them. But these would sit between the Unities and the Fluke. So we'll have a look at that in a sec. Comes with a uh, manual which is in Japanese, of course, because it's a Japanese made product. And also in English. And it seems to be quite good English too not the usual English you get with um, Asian made stuff. And a uh, calibration assurance certificate saying it's been calibrated, con what's this say here, hereby declares that this product was calibrated and tested in accordance with the standby calibration procedures during the manufacturing process conformable to the ISO 9001-2000 quality system requirements quality management system, if you got all that. So it's been calibrated. Awesome. Basically means at the point that you buy the thing, it's going to read pretty much accurate. And the second box is a Sanwa C-C8 carrying case. This one, I think this is about 15 bucks or something. The uh, meter itself was about 85 or 90 dollars ish. But that's just the standard sort of case. You've probably seen this style of case before. Old school, ain't nothing, ain't nothing cool like old school. Sits in there. Oh, hang on. I'll just get it yeah, like that. And then the strap goes over to hold it in. And your leads go there. Awesome. Because it's a little bit delicate with the uh, the moving meter. So I wanted to keep it kind of safe. You know, easy to sit on the shelf. Doesn't get bashed around so much. Not so solid state as a uh, digital model meter, which you can throw around in the back of your, uh, your car or the back of your uh, toolbox. So, yeah. Nice protection for my investment. So enough messing around with the meter. Well, let's pull the thing apart, see what makes this tick. So there's one screw in the back. And it should come apart, I believe. Well, there we go. So we can access the uh, batteries and the uh, fuses. So it came with batteries. Interesting choice, Fujitsu and Toshiba. Would have expected them to be the same or something, but maybe they just choose whatever they can buy cheapest. But that's no worries. They were free. They came with a thing. Um, we got the two fuses down the bottom here. You can see the uh, the current shunt there. It's bent wire, and looks like they've got the little calibration uh, wire coming off the side there. So what they'll do is they'd run that up and down. Looks like what they do is they start at the bottom. I'll zoom in a bit. I'll explain this. So what they do to calibrate this thing. They'll start down here with this wire. You can see this wire here. Basically, it just shorts um, wherever it puts 
you, you put it on this uh, this shunt, it'll short that straight across. So you, you basically lose your shunt as you um, move it along. So they'll put a, a reference current into the machine and uh, they'll check what it's reading. And they this little wire, they'll solder it down the bottom here and they'll move it up with a soldering, a soldering iron still touching it so it's all molten solder. And once it reads correct, you lift the soldering iron off, the solder solidifies in the correct position and that's calibrated. So, they've also got a, uh, where is it, there it is, a little pot there, a trim pot, AC 6 amp range, then up here we've got a AC volts calibration pot, W adjust here, I'm not sure what the W stands for, it might be the resistance scale or something or other, and we've got DC volts here. So the PCB looks nicely spaced out, straight point to point wiring well point to point layout there's no fancy curves or anything it's all angles so it's probably an older design um, they just kept producing it because hey it works there's nothing wrong with it let's pull this board out and see what's on the other side so I'll get my uh, smaller screwdriver I've got a few different sizes of screws here oh, get rid of these batteries too Uh, there we go, little one there. I'm going to expect the usual uh, circular traces for the uh, range selector that you see in pretty much every multimeter with a, uh, a rotary switch. But I'm interested to see the uh, input protection because it says on the front it has a fuse and diode protection. So I'm interested to see what that's all about. Okay, so we've got a few clips. And then hopefully it'll just lift out. Now I've got to be careful because of the wires to the meter movement. Yep, so there we go. We've got the uh, gold traces for the circular dial. And it looks like there's all our range resistors, SMD. We've got a transformer there. That might be doing something to do with the AC uh, RMS uh, measurement. Here we go, here's our diodes up here. And there's our FETs for our input impedance. The dials for the uh, zeroing and whatnot. And it looks like we've got some bigger resistors up here for the, uh, for the range. It's pretty pretty simple design. Not much going on there. A few little transistors down here. That They might be set up as a, uh, a stable multivibrator because this uh, LED fl uh, flashes when it's turned on so they're probably just flashing that LED. They'll do that to save battery power I guess. Don't need to have the LED on all the time. You can just flash and you can see it that the, uh, the thing's turned on. But yeah, not much else going on. And clearances seem fair enough. And uh, yeah, we've got a few cutouts between where they need to be for like the different voltage ranges and stuff so you can get arc over and whatnot. Yeah, seems pretty par for the course for a $100 multimeter. Oh, there's the, uh, the switch there. It'll have like a spring and a ball bearing inside so that as it turns it clicks around. Now there is no uh, actual MOV protection on this. Um, it's relatively simple. So you know, a better uh, digital multimeter often will have MOVs and other circuit protection. This doesn't have that. Um, I guess it's got to <laughs> know what you're doing. But I don't know if that's customary for uh, this sort of meter to not have MOVs and that sort of thing. I've got no idea. This is the first one I've ever bought, actually. Um, I've noticed this little assembly down here. It's like some... Uh, little pads. A few of them are sold over but not all of them are and they don't seem to go anywhere. It looks almost like a capacitive or an inductive sort of thing. Um, looks like it's on a ground plane sort of idea. I'm not sure. If anyone knows what this sort of thing is, I'll zoom in. If anyone knows what's going on, just here. What is that? Let me know. 
because it looks like you got different numbers you can choose, like number one or two or whatever. They're not going anywhere. They don't feed through the board, and they're not connect. It's just like in its own little group. So if you sold a one or two or was it four or five, it's just connecting different parts to itself. So anyone knows what that's for? I, I think it's something inductive or capacitive or something like, you know, not not noise rejection, but something to do with the uh, calibration anyway. But yeah, it looks not too bad inside. I'll, you know. Happy for a hundred dollars. The uh, the meter itself, the movement is actually molded into the case. It's actually part of the case. It's not a a meter they've screwed in. So um, you can see here, it's all one piece. But that that'll be like cost cutting. There's no reason to um, have a separate m meter movement um, when you can just you know make it in in the case like that. That's not a problem at all. So yeah, it's not. Not too bad for a hundred bucks. And it looks like they've got a, uh, a nice brass insert for the uh, main case screw there, which is a nice touch. Just means you won't strip it out as you uh, open this thing to replace the batteries. Sometimes it'll just be a, a self-tapping screw straight into the plastic and yeah, it's not that great for repeated opening and closing because it ends up stripping out. But with the brass insert there, that'll last for years before you have any problems with it. Probably even indefinitely if you use a little bit of mechanical sympathy, you don't strip the thing out. So yeah, not too bad design at all. And as for the case, it's uh, kind of like a, a vinyl sort of stuff with, I guess, cardboard or maybe plastic inside. I'm not sure. I'm not going to cut it open to see. Felt on the inside to not scratch anything up. And just the normal two compartments. The standard sort of fare. Not a problem there. That's uh, exactly as I expected it would be. All right, time to give this thing a test. So I've got my uh, my resistance standard here um, hooked up. I've got the thing zeroed and uh, the zero ohms adjusted here. So that's all good to go. I'll turn that on before I forget. Light's flashing. I don't know if you can see that. It's just like a blip, blip, blip to tell me that it's on without using too much power. And uh, my resistance standard that I built up here. 1K. 10k, it's 4y capable, and it's a uh, 100k and 1 meg. I'm probably going to make another one with uh, lower ranges, like 0 ohm, 1 ohm, 10 ohm, 100 ohm, that sort of thing. But this will do for now. Uh, I measured on my key site 34461A, 6.5 digit multimeter, with averaging and all that. So I've got um, the 1k is 1.0000258k ohms. The 10k is 10.000209k ohms. They're both uh, Vichy uh, high precision resistors. 100 ohm is 100.00435K. That's a Vichy. And the 1 meg is 1.0000887 meg. And that's a Caddick. So they're um, all high precision gear. And it's in a metal case and a four wire and all that sort of gear. So that's a nice little resistance standard that I've made. Good enough for me. So let's uh, hook it up to the 1K. We've got it in the uh, one times range there, and that should just move a little bit to the 1K, and spot on. All right, so if I move that to 10, that should move to the 100, because it's 100 times 10. And we're a little bit off, but we're reading about 90. So 900, uh, 900 ohms. And 100K, it should go to 10, and that's, <laughs> it's getting a bit bit blare, but we're coming kind of out of its uh, out of its range. You know, as you as you move further up the range, it's going to get more and more inaccurate. So you want to be um, yeah, selecting the right range to be in the ballpark. So 10k. If we go to the 10 times, that should once again go to 1k, and we are spot on. And then it's the same deal. It'll be just slightly out. Yeah, it's going to be the the same. The same story. So if we go to 100, 100k, that again is at the 1k mark exactly, and then it's going to be slightly below the 100, and then below 10. I mean, if I'm looking at uh, precision resistance uh, measurements, I'm not going to be using this thing, <laughs> that's for sure. 
So that is once again at 1k, and then it'll be the same deal. Because we're just multiplying out the uh, the the inaccuracies. So that, if we select the correct range, is working quite well. No worries. Like I said before, I'm more concerned with changes in voltage. That's what I want to see in this thing, rather than absolute voltages. So next, I'll get the. Uh, I've got a um, a precision voltage standard. Uh, a voltage generator, so I'll get that on the bench, and we'll um, see how it goes with that. So let's test the uh, DC current range. There's a DC 6 amp range and an AC 6 amp range, which we can test separately, at least on the DC side. The AC is a bit harder because I don't have a uh, calibrator or an, a, an AC like current limited power supply. Um, same with the AC voltage range. I don't have a calibrator to do that, but that's all right. Um, we will test the DC uh, current. Um, starting with the 300 milliamp range, so I've got my calibrator here set to 100 milliamps. If we turn that on, it should come up to about 10, and we are spot on. Nice. So if I drop that down one range to 10 milliamps, and we go to the 30 milliamp range, nice, spot on. So we'll go down again to 1 milliamp, and we'll go to the 3 milliamp range. Looking pretty good. If I go down again, a 0.1 milliamp and go to the uh, 0.3 milliamp range spot on now it goes down to 1.0.12 microamp um, my calibrator won't go down that low but um, we'll give it a try so that's that's my my calibrator is putting out just like a, a small floating voltage and that's what it's picking up. Like I've got zero, 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 zero milliamps on my uh, calibrator. Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah, straight off the off the scale. So that's real sensitive. That's that FET uh, doodag that they're talking about. We can get it real sensitive. So the other ranges test fine. So maybe I'll plug this in to my uh, power supply. I'll get myself organised. Well, I'll give the uh, DC 6 amp range a test, so I'll swap that over to the uh, correct input. I'll turn them on power supply, which I've already set to uh, 1 amp, so it's 0.1 volts at 1 amp at the moment. And we're reading 5. Actually, that's uh, because it's 30, we're doing 6 amps, not 60 amps, so that's 3, we've got to divide by 10. But because it's a 3 amp, or th up to 3 on the scale, we're reading up to 6, so you times that by 2, so 0 0.5 times 2 is 10. Or one, sorry, one amp. So for it to be on the uh, five is perfect. That looks pretty good. So there we go, the Samwa EM7000 with case, uh, hundred bucks for the uh, the kit, around about give or take, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on exchange rates and whatever. But yeah, it's uh, definitely not the cheapest analog uh, meter you can buy, but it's um, definitely not the cheapest in quality either. It measures within specs, got a good amount of ranges. I'm I'm not disappointed at all. I'm I'm actually quite happy with that. So I'll definitely be using this, uh, usually for like I said before, audio gear and um, other things where I need to see a changing voltage. It'll become qu in quite quite handy, uh, especially with that six amp range, the AC and DC six amp range. That's one of the reasons why I got this one because it's got that higher current range, along with all the the more sensitive lower ranges as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Good piece of kit. Definitely recommend it. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, whatever you want to do. Keep watching the videos is the most important thing, and we'll see you in the next one.